Hey everybody, I'm Gabriela Fresquez, host of web series Inspira and LATV's Latin Nation. Now, today is a very special day because I'm right outside the Boyle Heights campaign office for my Inspira co-host, Emmanuel Pleites. Now, last summer, he decided to run for mayor of Los Angeles, and I'm so excited for him. So while I've been hosting Latin Nation, he's been busy at work right inside here, and he has a heck of an operation going on. I'm really excited. His campaign's got national attention, and I'm about to go inside and find out out exactly what he's been up to. Hi, Emmanuel. Hey. <laughs> it's been a while, hasn't it? Has. It's How great to you? see you. Good to see you. This is incredible. This is it. You these, have, these are my digs. You have you a, see my talking points across the room. Yes. See, so anyway, but this is it. Tell me a little bit about your operation in particular, because I know you are running a grassroots yes. organization, which makes you, kind of sets you apart from some of the other candidates. Right. So what's that been like, and has that been working? It, it, it has been working. We uh, set out on this journey knowing that we were going to be outmatched in terms of dollars by some of the front-running candidates. Mm -hmm. So our campaign had to be more innovative, and it had to have more energy and more passion from anyone involved. So. We have made it a point that everyone that's on our campaign is considered, on one end, a content creator. On the other end, they are someone that does voter outreach from the finance director, the campaign manager, all down to all the organizers. So we've tried to maximize the amount of time, energy, and people power that we have to reach as many voters as possible. And it's paying off. We're rising in the polls, we're trending positively with our voters, and people are noticing all over, not just LA, but in the country, and they're starting to pay attention to this race because it's important. It's LA, second biggest city in the country. Who are you running against, by the way? Uh, that's not important. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there are seven other candidates. Right. Seven other candidates, I would say four others that are actually raising decent amount of money. And, you know, they, they, they come from different walks of life. However, none of them actually grew up in the inner city of LA mm -hmm. and understand what it's like to struggle in this city. I think I'm obviously different than those candidates, but I've actually grown up here. I understand the problems firsthand and I've prepared myself. I've educated myself. I've made sure that I'm, you know, I've gotten access to top institutions from academic at Stanford to being at the White House and the Department of the Treasury that I feel confident and ready to address any problem. And because of the way we're doing our campaign, we're not reliant on you know, the big you know, special interest money. So we're able to be more independent in, in what I speak about and what I, and, and what I believe in. I can actually be very vocal about it and say, I really believe that we have to be investing in the most underserved communities. We have to fix our budget in a responsible way and make sure that we're thinking in the long run how this economy can actually grow. And at the end of the day, the best way for an economy to grow is if you have an educated and skilled workforce. Well, I have to say, you definitely have my vote. <laughs> <laughs> of course. You. I appreciate um, that. I'm excited. Do you to want to see the rest the of the office? Yes, absolutely. Can you show me around? Yeah, yeah, Let's check it so out. So look, we're, we'll go this way. <laughs> so here's our back room where a lot of decisions get made. In fact, uh, the, the most dominant force here is right. our finance director, okay. Richie Serna, who... Uh, how's it going? How's we, it going? Richie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Gabby. Who you may have gotten an email from. I've got a few, yeah. Because he has essentially yeah. uh, Keeps me um, scavenged through my network of, of friends and I've given them the authority to and reach out to them to make sure that either I can speak to them or he'll just speak to them and, and get them engaged and actually contributing to the campaign. So that's his job. Future David Plus in the making, right? <laughs> we'll see. Better. <laughs> this is a little mini war room. This is our, what we term as our social war room because our director of social media is right there who thinks through all of our advertising but mainly online because we're the most social campaign out there. We have all the platforms. and So anyway, this is brainstorming room. I know part of your campaign strategy was to try to get as, uh, a lot of videos out there to really mm -hmm. kind of do a viral campaign as yeah. well with videos. Yeah. I've been watching some of them. They're pretty awesome. You watched the Harlem Shake? Job. I did. I watched <laughs> the Harlem Shake. That was really awesome. Our most successful video yes. that happened within only a couple hours. Wow. So this what's is our, this? Main, our main call room where, where all the magic happens in terms of voter outreach. And over here is Erin. Erin's our campaign manager. Hi, Gabby. Nice to meet you. So she's in charge of the whole show. When things go well, that's her job. When things are not going well, it's also her job <laughs> to troubleshoot and make sure we continue pushing ahead. And so she's got the toughest job of the campaign, obviously. Well, aside from the gentleman beside you. Right, but so everybody here pretty much answers to you. You kind of lay down the law for everyone. 
Um, Make sure everybody's on task. Well, laying down the law is actually a group effort because we try to have a structure here that holds people accountable to their team, to each other, and also to the reason why we're here, which is Manuel's candidacy and the whole vision of what we want for LA. Over here, this is one of our volunteers, Hi. Jesus Abril. How are you? Gabriela. Gabby, nice to meet you. He's working on some, some envelopes, some handwritten address envelopes that actually really help us drive voter contact in a different way because people actually open them. They want to see what's inside and even if it's black and white, but it's a nice letter that a voter is really interested in actually learning about the candidate at that point because we actually took the time to actually write their name on the envelope. Anita, Anita Hi. is the COO of the campaign. Yeah, be so, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So at the end of the day, the whole operation, it's Anita's job to make sure it's actually functioning and moving forward. Right, got some pressure on. That is a lot of pressure. <laughs> so what you, what brought you into the campaign? How did you find out about Emmanuel? How did you guys meet? So I met Emmanuel actually about, was it six five, years ago? Five, five years five ago. Five years ago. Yeah. Um, I would, I'm from the Bay Area, and I was uh, working in a nonprofit um, in Oakland, and and Emmanuel was on the board of directors of that nonprofit. It was called CEO Women. And it was working with low income immigrant and refugee women and helping them start small wow. businesses. Emmanuel was awesome on the board. And I just, I was blown away by uh, not only his enthusiasm and energy, but the fact that he was so young. <laughs> so uh, we've stayed in touch over yeah. the years. And, you know, randomly I got a call from him or an email. And then he invited me to join the team. And I said, wait, what? Like, let's talk about this yeah. and see how it can work. And so here I am. And now she's down here. Yeah. Awesome. So, it run smoothly. So how, how long have you been working on the campaign? Since mid-December. So this is pretty much since the very beginning. No, no. Well, no the, the beginning, beginning was July. June. June, July, yeah. yeah. So we've been at it since July. <laughs> and we've it brought in, yeah, so imagine, imagine walking six to seven days a week for over six months. That's, yes. that's what some of our staff yes. has gone through. All right. People like Anita came in in December to kind of provide that reinforcement. So you, you really know how to handpick the hard-working, like, <laughs> Gritty, die hard. Something's going on where either they're here. crazy or I'm. <laughs> I think that Emmanuel is the best candidate for this job, without a doubt. I mean, every time I see information about other candidates, I'm like, what are they thinking? Why would they even be able to be mayor? And uh, so, first of all, that, but then the fact that we've got this momentum and every day we get a little more, you know, press, whether it's, you know, funny, silly things like our Harlem Shake video on the Huffington mm -hmm. Post. I know you have an event to go to right now, yes. so I'm gonna let you go, and I'm actually Thank gonna you. come with you. All right, awesome. Cool. Well, good. Well, <laughs> I'll see you over there then. Yeah, sounds awesome. good. All right, bye. This event is meant to raise awareness about the education inequity in LA, and a lot of educators, administrators, students, parents have gotten together to walk the streets, raise awareness, and have a little rally here. How has um, you know being born and bred and raised in LA really shaped and defined your unique perspective on our education system? Well, for me, it's it's personal. I, I feel the urgency to address these issues. I. I, I want to put, pour my heart and soul into making sure that education is the top priority of City Hall, of, of any institution in LA, quite frankly, that cares about civic life and for the betterment of the city. Because at the end of the day, education is the number, number one most important determinant for the success of any one person, but it's also the foundation of our economy. And, and I've, I've lived through some of these problems growing up in the inner city, going through public schools, being a product of public schools. And, and I feel the, the need to want to address this today because we can't wait any longer. Too many kids are not going to college right now and they could be prepared for them. Or if they don't want to go to college, they should have some other access to technical training, to things that, where they can actually get a job. And, and right now, they don't. And we need to make sure that we put all of our energy into that. That's amazing. Can I just say that I'm just so excited to be here today. Thank you. This is really awesome. I'm um, just you. really so proud of you and all the work you've been doing. And well, it's, it's not just me. It's everyone, everyone that's with me all my supporters and, and just Angelinos that are having an opportunity to actually vote and so, you know, take our city in a new direction. So thank you to the organizers. Gracias a todos por estar aquí involucrados en la educación de nuestro, del futuro de nuestra ciudad. And the last message is to, to our kids, to our young people. A lot of people say that you're the futures of tomorrow, you're the future leaders, or you're the leaders of tomorrow. I'm here to tell you that you're the leaders of today. You're the leaders of today. Don't wait for anyone to tell you that you can be a leader. You can lead today by 
getting your voice out there because people like me will listen and people older than me will listen. You just need to speak up, march, keep these marches going, and we will take education to the next level and be the model of this country. Thank you again. Gracias. Gracias, Juan. Thank you. Our school is changing so much because of budget cuts. And I believe we, as students, we don't have those teachers that tell us that we can do it. And I know we can. I know you can. And I can. Don't let anyone say you can. You are the leader today. Okay. I want to cry. No, no, no. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. A lot of people, they don't. A lot of our young people don't have that guidance or talk about it. You need to step up. Lift your voice, okay? Because I need it, we all need it. And you could do it, okay? I believe that we can do it, but we need people to push us. And I believe we need someone like you to change it. Thank you, thank you. Well, we need people like you, and, I, and I'm going to be with you, okay? So I want to hear the dirt, because there's always some dirt in, in any kind of political political thing, political campaign. So so what's the dirt on Emmanuel? What's the scoop? No dirt, man. He's a, he's a perfect uh, individual. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. That's why I should vote for him. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> that's right. That's our candidate for mayor of Los Angeles. <laughs> Wow, so I just spent an amazing day with my Inspira co-host, Emmanuel Pleites, who's running for mayor of Los Angeles. We just got back from an event where he spoke about education and the public school system in Los Angeles, and I was totally inspired. So make sure you get out into the polls and vote for him on March 5th. Emmanuel, congratulations. It's been great to catch up with you today. Knock him dead. <laughs>